so on Wednesday of this week, I was um, joyfully able to accept the invitation to uh, perform a memorial service for the tragedies around Boston at the uh, Samuel Colgate Memorial Chapel here in Rochester. Um, and I was able there to include a um, little wee bit of a sermon. And from Wednesday to the present, um, things have complexified such that I think that some of those words are still powerful and useful. And I'd like to share them again here. It's incredibly important to me to have us all remember in times of darkness and um, pain and tragedy to remember that God is at work calling us all forth into a greater sense of justice and of reconciling one to another. That God, as the God of love, is calling us into love to the building up of the kind of community that more and more readily resembles the kingdom of God in which love is the law. And so um, for all of you grieving folks and anxious folks and anxious hearts, um, maybe there's some small measure of comfort in these words. We gather today to remember to remember that God marked both day and night as sacred times, that all God made in creation was called good, that even when we may feel God has forsaken us, there is yet good, that even when darkness comes over the land, there is yet good, that even in the darkness of the land, of its soil and in its hidden places, there is yet good. Oftentimes, we want God not only to be our savior, but to be our superhero. We want justice dispensed and villains vanquished. We want God to overturn our foes and triumph with a fist held high. We want a God of light with the righteousness of the morning sun to banish darkness. Well, there is certainly scripture to give us that vision, and there may well be a season for that kind of thinking, but I don't think today that it's called for. Today I want us to be reminded, to remember that our God is so great. It is not merely that we are children of the light and children of the day, not merely that God will someday in the future defeat darkness. Not merely that wisdom will prevail over foolishness and self-interest. But that God's presence and life-giving spirit is here, now, in the darkness too. There, in the fertile depths of soil, the reaches of the sea where light never touches, life yet persists. God endlessly calls forth life from life, for grasses and grains, from the sturgeon and the salmon, from the chanterelle and the truffle, the anglerfish and the tuna. In the depths, God stirs, endlessly calling for life to begin, to continue, to grow. And we have gathered here to remember that there is no place our God's presence does not touch. Yes, in the piercing blue of a spring sky, and yes, in the fields waiting to be furrowed, yes, in the vastness of the stars, and yes, in these stones, in this place, in your hearts, in our tears, yes, in the light, and yes, in the darkness. There are many places where fear resides, and God is there too finding the cracks and spaces where love can come to live. Recently, our brothers and sisters in Boston have been plunged into terror, and many of us have gone along with them, 
hearing the media, listening for our friends. And so we too have been plunged into anxiety. And yet God is there with us, comforting, consoling, and calling forth life from life. Let us not forget. Let us remember. And let us not be so bold to think that our God can live only in the light. There in the depths of the soil, in the emptiness of the stars in the sky, and far into the sea where light never touches, in all of those places, God's presence is announced and is calling forth life. Always life, love, and life.